Welcome back to the Tacoma Holic channel, everybody. In today's video, I'll be going over my recommendations on what you should get if you have zero tools, but want to start working on your Tacoma. Will this be a complete list of everything you need to work on your Tacoma? Of course not, but it'll get you started probably for just a few hundred bucks. So not that bad really when you're talking about the prices of tools. So let's get started. All right, guys, this video is part of a playlist I entitled Beginner Tacoma Videos designed if you have just purchased a Tacoma or maybe you've had a Tacoma for a while and want to start working on it. This video and the others like it are for you. So for more videos like this one for beginners, check out the playlist linked right above. And you guys know how this works. If you see anything you like in this video, there will be links for everything I'm talking about down in the description below. All right, guys, first on the list and one of my favorite tools, just because it perfectly matches my truck, is a set of plastic trim removal tools. These are just five or six bucks, definitely invaluable because yes, you can use flathead screwdrivers to pop off some of the plastic trim panels on the interior of your Tacoma, but you're probably gonna scratch whatever plastic it is you're trying to work on or remove so you can get to other stuff. Not gonna happen with these plastic trim removal tools. They have a variety of like heads and configurations so you can get off most of the interior trim pieces on your Tacoma. Definitely one of the first things I recommend you pick up. Next up on the list is some type of magnetic tool tray because nothing is more frustrating than losing whatever nuts or bolts or little metal pieces of whatever you're working on. You get dropped in the engine bay. Trust me, it's a pain in the ass. I've got a few different types here. This one is actually magnetic on the back so you could stick it underneath your hood, stick it on your fender, wherever you want. It's pretty strong too. It'll hold like ratchets and stuff and obviously any kind of nuts and bolts you want to put in here. Pretty decent size too. And recently I picked up this version. It's actually one of those plastic flexible trays and the metal part right here. You can put your nuts and bolts and even these side holes it has places for like bits, hex bits, stuff like that, Allen keys, uh, little compartments and stuff. So you can like put this on the top of your engine Sort of just keep yourself organized while you're working on your truck. Trust me when I say if you've never used these before, you will love them. And these usually come in about $8 for this one, and this one was about $30. Next on the list is a torque wrench, but you should know that not all torque wrenches are created equally. I'm not just talking about the brand. I'm talking about the range of torque specs they give you. They go from small like micro torque wrenches that go up to like 20 or 25 foot pounds, even though I think they convert it to inch pounds because it's really very small stuff. They have a medium one that usually goes, I want to say 10 to 150, which will cover most of the stuff you're going to work on with your Tacoma. And they have the longer one, which is about two feet, which goes up to, I think it starts at 25 foot pounds and goes up to 250 foot pounds. I have one of each. What I like about the longest, strongest torque wrench, I guess, is it's easy to use on your tires, especially if you're running larger tires like me, because the handlebar actually goes past the tire, so you don't have to put any kind of like spacer just to get it off the rubbers when you're torquing the stuff. I know a lot of people just go by the German standard good and tight when they are tightening down stuff when they're working on their truck, but some stuff you really should torque to spec. Always check those specs to make sure you know ahead of time whatever project you're working on so you have a torque wrench appropriate for the job. And again, the torque wrench adapters, they go quarter inch, three eighths and half inch. So make sure you also have a socket that will fit your torque wrench. The big ones usually come in at 60 and the smaller, the medium and the extra small one, like the micro torque wrench, usually around 25 or 30, depending on what brand you get. But you should definitely have at least one torque wrench. All right, guys, getting close to the end here with one of the most important things that sort of clumped together with three different things, and that is a basic socket set, some ratcheting wrenches and a ratchet set, all of which have to do with getting your nuts off. That's what she said. <laughs> this is obviously probably one of the most important things since Let's be honest, nuts and bolts are pretty much holding the entire truck together. There is a ton of variety with these. You can get regular sockets, you can get shallow sockets. I have a set, I have a set of both actually. I recently purchased the shallow socket set when I was doing my transmission drain and refill because the fill plug, you have to put a shallow socket on there. The regular one, which is usually about four inches or so, not gonna fit. But up until that point, I had gotten away for a few years at least with just using the regular socket set. So if you're just looking at getting one, I would recommend getting the regular socket set. As far as the wrenches, you don't have to get ratcheting wrenches. You can get the regular ones, which are certainly cheaper, but the convenience of the ratcheting wrench not to have to reposition every time you crank on that is well worth its weight in gold, if you ask me. And then of course the various ratchets, again with a quarter inch, three eighths and half inch adapter to work with whatever sockets you're using. Just keep that in mind. 
don't buy a set of half inch sockets and you only have a 3H ratchet, you'll have to put an adapter on it and that's just an added expense. So plan ahead. I would recommend definitely if you have none of this stuff, buy it all together so you can see what works with everything. Prices, there's quite a range, especially now with COVID pricing. Usually a socket set's gonna run you about 50 for like the full size, usually like nine to 19 millimeters. Obviously get metric if you're gonna be working on a Tacoma. You can get a ratchet set for all three for usually 30 bucks or so. And a ratcheting wrench set, the prices on those are a little jacked right now, usually 50 to $100, again, depending on the brand. All right, guys, coming in for my final recommendation is two things in one. Well, really three if you count the small adapter piece. First of all is a breaker bar, and then to pair well with this, of course, is a can of PB Blaster. PB Blaster is like five or six bucks. Trust me, if you have a Tacoma, especially if you're living in one of the northern states or wherever, you get some ocean spray where they salt the roads. It's gonna make the bolt on your Tacoma corrode rather quickly and sometimes be a pain in the ass to get off. I definitely recommend soaking, especially if it's under your truck, all the bolts you're gonna be working on at least a day in advance with the PB Blaster. Just let it soak in. It'll make them much easier to get off with your breaker bar. Never use a torque wrench for that. It can ruin the specifications on it. Always get yourself a dedicated breaker bar. And just keep in mind some basic physics. The longer the lever arm, the easy or less force you will have to apply to break whatever bolt you're talking about loose. And as an added bonus, there is this little adapter right here. If you can see that on camera, it turns your breaker bar into a ratcheting breaker bar. Can you hear that? 10, 15 bucks for that little piece, definitely priceless. Again, just for the added convenience of not having to reposition your breaker bar every time you wanna crank down on it. And a regular breaker bar, I think is usually 20 to 25 bucks. All right, everybody, and that will do it for this video. Comment below and let me know what you think of my list and if there's anything else you think I should have added on. Again, if you're looking at getting any of the tools I went over today, links for everything in the description down below. I do plan on doing a sort of follow-up video showing how to safely lift your Tacoma, meaning all the tools and parts you will need to do that. Again, that is part of that beginner Tacoma playlist that I definitely encourage you to check out. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel by watching this video. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video.